Have you made any effort, or as we sit here today, do you know how many patients who took OxyContin in Kentucky became dependent or addicted? No. Do you believe that an inappropriate number of patients or an excessive number of patients who took OxyContin in Kentucky became addicted or dependent? No. Do you know or has Purdue made any effort to ascertain how many people who were started on OxyContin wound up becoming dependent and moving on to heroin at some point? <laughs> no. And the Start With, Stay With campaign, do you know who came up with the Start With, Stay With marketing campaign? I wish I could lay claim to it, but no, I don't know who came up with it. And then it says... That was not the launch campaign in a sense. It may have been a subtext of the launch campaign, which was the old way and the new way, but... It says at the bottom, less potential abuse than other opioids. Do you know where that claim came from? I don't know. Do you know whether OxyContin had less potential abuse than other opioids? I don't know what this refers to. And you compensated your sales force very well, based predominantly on how much OxyContin they sold. Is that correct? Well, the successful, the most successful salespeople, a majority of their income was bonus. The average salesman, certainly when we launched the product, the overwhelming majority of their income was their salary and the benefits that they received. And for the average sales force, salesman, I think it would have been 50% of their income or 70% of their income salary and the balance in bonus. Sure. But I don't, I don't remember this in detail, and of course, it changed over time. The way the sales scheme was set up, if they sold more OxyContin, they made more money, basically. Yes, yes, the same as almost every other company in the industry. Do you know if reps that promoted and sold OxyContin sometimes ended up making over $250,000 a year? <sighs> I've heard that that was the case. I'm sure it was unusual. And then your top sellers were rewarded with trips to Bermuda or London in what was called the Toppers Program. Is that correct? Yes. You won't believe how committed I am to make OxyContin a huge success. It is almost that I've dedicated my life to it. On July 30th of 2014, were you a director of Purdue Pharma, Inc.? Mm, not that I'm aware. This is an affidavit filed in the Southern District of West Virginia. And does that appear to be your name? <sighs> that does. And it's dated July 30, 2014. It says, Declaration of Dr. Richard S. Sackler. I am a director of Purdue Pharma, Inc., the general partner of Purdue Pharma, LP. I've held this position since 1990. If that's what it says, then that's what it says. This didn't just happen. It was a deftly coordinated, planned event that took dozens of workers years of effort to succeed. The most demanding new drug approval package for any analgesic product ever submitted didn't languish at the agency. Unlike the years that other filings linger at FDA, this product was approved in 11 months, 14 days. Our previous best approval time for other products was measured in years, not months. We have to hammer on the abusers in every way possible. They are the culprits and the problem. They are reckless criminals. On July 30th of 2014, were you a director of Purdue Pharma, Inc.? Not that I'm aware. This is an affidavit filed in the Southern District of West Virginia. And does that appear to be your name? That does. And it's dated July 30, 2014. 
It says, Declaration of Dr. Richard S. Sackler, I am a director of Purdue Pharma Inc., the general partner of Purdue Pharma LP. I've held this position since 1990. That's what it says, and that's what it says. And the Start With, Stay With campaign. Do you know who came up with the Start With, Stay With marketing campaign? I wish I could lay claim to it, but no, I don't know who came up with it. And then it says... That was not the launch campaign in a sense. It may have been a subtext of the launch campaign, which was the old way and the new way, but... It says at the bottom, less potential abuse than other opioids. Do you know where that claim came from? I don't know. Do you know whether OxyContin had less potential abuse than other opioids? I don't know what this refers to. Have you made any effort, or as we sit here today, do you know how many patients who took OxyContin in Kentucky became dependent or addicted? No. Do you believe that an inappropriate number of patients or an excessive number of patients who took OxyContin in Kentucky became addicted or dependent? No. Do you know or has Purdue made any effort to ascertain how many people who were started on OxyContin wound up becoming dependent and moving on to heroin at some point? No. And you compensated your sales force very well based predominantly on how much OxyContin they sold, is that correct? The successful, the most successful salespeople a majority of their income was bonus. The average salesman, certainly when we launched the product, the overwhelming majority of their income was their salary and the benefits that they received. And for the average sales force, salesman, I think it would have been 50% of their income or 70% of their income salary and the balance in bonus. Sure. But I don't, I don't remember this in detail course it changed over time. The way the sales scheme was set up, if they sold more OxyContin, they made more money, basically? Yes. Yes. The same as almost every other company in the industry. Do you know if reps that promoted and sold OxyContin sometimes ended up making over $250,000 a year? I've heard that that was the case. I'm sure it was unusual. And then your top sellers were rewarded with trips to Bermuda or London and what was called the Toppers program, is that correct? Yes. The launch of OxyContin tablets will be followed by a blizzard of prescriptions that will bury the competition. The prescription blizzard will be so deep, dense, and white. You won't believe how committed I am to make OxyContin a huge success. It is almost that I dedicated my life to it. This is not too bad. It could have been far worse. How many Purdue entities are there? I don't know. I've seen upwards of 69 different corporations, perhaps, that the Sackler family owns. Is that correct? Well, if you've counted them, I can't differ with you. I don't know the answer. Who is Lydia Johnson? I don't know. How much money has Purdue Frederick or Purdue Pharma made off the sale of OxyContin? I don't know. Do you know how much the Sackler family has made off the sale of OxyContin? I don't know. Do you know how many current companies are owned by the Sackler family? No. All right. In discussing OxyContin, how many companies were involved in the production, manufacturing, or distribution of OxyContin? Can you specify the geography? In the world. Many. Are you still the director of Purdue Pharma, Inc.? I'm not sure. Have you ever gone back and studied the history of addiction and how it has played out in the 19th and 20th centuries? I'm not a student of that literature. Now, in 2001, who did Michael Friedman work for? I don't know. How about Howard Udell? Do you know who he worked for? No. What about Paul Goldenheim? Do you know who he worked for? I don't... I don't know that. Do you know whether you worked for Purdue Pharma or Purdue Frederick in 2001? I don't know for sure. And are all of these business records? I don't know. You know, I'm not a lawyer. Sitting here today, after all you've come to learn as a witness, do you believe Purdue's conduct in marketing and promoting OxyContin in Kentucky caused any of the prescription drug addiction problems now plaguing the Commonwealth?
I don't believe so. And the start with, the stay with campaign. Do you know who came up with the start with, stay with marketing campaign? I wish I could lay claim to it, but no, I don't know who came up with it. And then it says... That was not the launch campaign in a sense. Okay, it may have been a subtext of the launch campaign, which was the old way and the new way, but... It says at the bottom, less potential abuse than other opioids. Do you know where that claim came from? I don't know. Do you know whether Oxycontin had less potential abuse than other opioids? I don't know what this refers to. I'm going to hand you a document that is at the top. Let's mark this as Exhibit 38. It's from Richard Sackler. Do you recognize that? I recognize the name. The launch of Oxycontin tablets will be followed by a blizzard of prescriptions that will bury the competition. The prescription blizzard will be so deep, dense, and right. The launch of Oxycontin tablets will be followed by a blizzard of prescriptions that will bury the competition. The prescription blizzard will be so deep, dense, and white. We have to hammer on the abusers in every way possible. They are the culprits and the problem. They are reckless criminals. Have you made any effort, or as we sit here today, do you know how many patients who took OxyContin in Kentucky became dependent or addicted? Nope. Do you believe that an inappropriate number of patients or an excessive number of patients who took OxyContin in Kentucky became addicted or dependent? Nope. Do you know or has Purdue made any effort to ascertain how many people who were started on OxyContin wound up becoming dependent and moving on to heroin at some point? Nope. On July 30th of 2014, were you a director of Purdue Pharma, Inc.? Not that I'm aware. This is an affidavit filed in the Southern District of West Virginia, and does that appear to be your name? That does. And it's dated July 30, 2014. It says, Declaration of Dr. Richard S. Sackler. I am a director of Purdue Pharma, Inc., the general partner of Purdue Pharma LP. I've held this position since 1990. If that's what it says, then that's what it says. You won't believe how committed I am to make Oxycontin a huge success. It is almost that I've dedicated my life to it. The launch of Oxycontin tablets will be followed by a blizzard of prescriptions that will bury the competition. The prescription blizzard will be so deep, dense, and white. We have to hammer on the abusers in every way possible. They are the culprits and the problem. They are reckless criminals.